Introduction Chapter 0, 0.0 Part 4. So our next topic is going to be the power and value of art. And a lot of students um, may know that certain things are worth money and mention those things. And, it, and it's true. There, there is um, some record breaking that's been happening uh, in the last 15, 20 years. It's kind of phenomenal. And of course we have, it's, indi it's indicative of our time in history. We have quite a few billionaires, um, more than we ever have. So sometimes these sale prices get really crazy. Uh, so value can mean sale price. It can. Um, but there's also a lot of sp ceremonial, spiritual, and political value. And we're going to look into these different um, topics. Now back to our tea bowl. That is probably priceless, literally, because of its importance to the culture. It can't be removed from the culture. It's so significant in so many ways. It's hard to it's hard to put that into a monetary value and um, it would want to stay within the culture. Many artifacts, many things in the world, um, tribal masks from Africa, I um, mean I could go on and on, that were not meant to be removed and very unfortunately were removed and are in museums in Europe and so on, in the U.S. Um, they were never meant to to leave the the native people that they were with and there's a lot of controversy about that now finally and people are starting to get their artifacts back but some of those things don't have a price they don't they aren't sold they're made for religious purposes okay so slightly different um john michael basquiat and there are two films on him that are really good both of them are very good this is an untitled piece from 1982 this broke a record and this is on page 30. This sold for $110.5 million in 2017. I do believe that record's been broken since then a couple of times. Um, but Basquiat was, was a huge artist. He only lived till he was 28 years old. He was friends with Andy Warhol. He did all kinds of um, amazing work. But our buyer uh, was a Japanese gentleman, Yusaku uh, Meizawa, and he purchased it, and he said he felt like he had a duty um, to uh, care for this masterpiece. And generationally, he related to um, Basquiat's time frame and his emotion and his expression. So it was important enough for him to buy this. He felt really moved. It wasn't an investment for him. It was an emotional decision. Um, very often, though... Uh, when billionaires or multimillionaires buy work, or even just art collectors who are in the low millions, um, they put it in bubble wrap and it never sees the light of day. That does happen. They buy it as an investment. But in this case, there's an emotional decision, and he felt like he must have this painting. So he's paid that enormous sum for it. Very different piece that we're going to look at, and this is from uh, Australia. And this is made from um, a woman from the Nik Nikina people. They say their syllables very quickly. And this is Nikina down here, Bush Tucker, Nikina country. Now, Bush Tucker means um, sort of like food. Tucker means food. And then Bush is like the desert. So the Bush for them um is similar to sort of our i would say more of like our southwestern desert arizona new mexico like there's plants and stuff it's not just a pile of sand there's a few trees and so on <clears throat> but it's very sparse and she's identifying food for uh younger people she's one of the elders of her community she's born in 1910 so she's an aboriginal artist and she is um painting this um with acrylic on canvas and she's doing sort of a bird's eye view explaining the landscape, which is really important uh, historically. For the elders, are the only ones who know where the water sources are across the country, um, trees and so on, different places where survival would be really important. So she's pushing, she's painting the bush foods and fruits throughout this, this county that she, that she lives in, or country rather. Isn't she amazing? I just love her. She's 90. Well, I guess she'd be, if she was born 110, she's uh, um, 110.
10 at this point. I don't know if she's still living. Problem with a book being published, it takes some time for updates to come through um, once it gets published. I don't know, but what an amazing person. She's sitting there focused on her paintings. Very hardworking woman. Very, very different piece. Now this is a casting, a self-portrait, cast in blood. This uh, sold also for a number of millions of dollars. I don't recall right now because we're not having that in the book at the moment. But the valuation here that we're talking about, <clears throat> and of course let me back up, our valuation here would be in that survival going across the bush country and also keeping the culture alive. In this piece, we immediately respond to this in a visceral, which means like a gut reaction. Viscera literally means guts and intestines. But we respond to this like, oh, you know, like in a in a way that's very intense because we recognize it as blood. So it's frozen. So that's how the casting stays in in the shape of his head. He makes a mold of his face and his head. Then he pours, uh, sorry, pours blood into it. And then it is frozen. So this has to be kept... Um, in a freezer and it has to be cold and I heard um, I don't know I think this I'm pretty sure this is correct this is his work uh, somebody was cleaning the house and they unplugged the fridge to to um, plug in a vacuum and the thing melted and so I don't know that was kind of a wild story so you think about refrigeration and electricity requiring your artwork to maintain its um, structure that that's asking a lot right <laughs> so when we think about um value we're thinking about our mortality and our fears uh, when we see that much blood that's very intense the amount of blood that that it takes for him to he has to accumulate this blood over time uh you know he's he's uh giving blood per se like in a in plastic containers <clears throat> and then once he gets enough he can do the casting um, but to the amount of that amount of blood equals the amount that you would die, if that makes sense, if you were to, uh, you know, bleed. So you'd be bleeding to death. So it makes us contemplate our own mortality. It's very raw and it's really kind of a heavy reflection on identity and self. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is, um, <clears throat> the girl with the pearl earring, very famous painting from Vermeer. 1665 um, Dutch painter and we have this light source it's kind of magical what what our, our author is tapping into and the um, comments on Tracy Chevalier uh, that wrote the uh, best-selling novel Girl with the Pearl Earring that became a film with Scarlett Johansson you're welcome to watch that um, that it isn't really finished in the sense that her ch her face is sort of between emotions. It's similar to the Mona Lisa. So in that case, she's wondering whether she's happy or sad. So there's a, an emotional engagement. And this is a valuable painting in and of itself. Um, it is, but it's also valuable to this person in the sense that they continue to look at it, and it was inspiring to them. The the um, author, Chevalier, had a poster, did not own the painting. The painting has never left the Netherlands, but um, otherwise known as Holland. It, it, that person, uh, the author, had a poster and has always had that poster or another poster like it wherever they lived and never tires of looking at this piece. Now, a lot of times you go into your house, um, if you walk around the room, you you don't really notice half of the objects in there, including the artwork on the walls, because you've seen it a million times. And what Chevalier is trying to say is that this painting has never turned into wallpaper, has never sort of disappeared on the wall. It She always noticed it. It was always important to her. So that unresolved sense. That's also why we like Impressionism, because it seems unresolved. Last one's going to be protest and censorship, and then we're going to get into um, content. So Ai Weiwei is who we're going to look at, and um, pornography sometimes, challenges to power, sort of social activism things, religious beliefs, being offended. <clears throat> so there's sometimes there are times where things are censored or modified, which is horrifying, but it does happen. 
So Ai Weiwei, this is sacred, this piece that we're looking at. Ai Weiwei is one of the top three artists. Sometimes he's number one. Uh, Yoyoi Kusama, who is uh, Japanese, Ai Weiwei is Chinese. They both live in their home countries, on and off, for Ai Weiwei. He lived in the U.S. Um, and <clears throat> around the time of Basquiat and Warhol in the 80s, 90s, um, he was around and he went back to China and he has protested and he has um, been an agitator in China. He still lives there now. And what this piece is about is his incarceration. So this is in a broke church, This the room. I don't know how significant this really was for the Venice Biennale in 2013. Um, but I think it, a lot of times when you're in Europe, this is the the framework or the blank wall that you're going to hang your painting on or put a large sculpture into. It's going to be a space like this, not necessarily a church, but some of the older architecture really, to me, it's very different than a, a gallery or museum. We would be in and just be a flat white wall. But at any rate, he puts these pieces in here and you can look in, there's these little windows um, he miniaturized it to some degree, but the inside looks like this. So there's a sort of portrait of him um, in a, these are sculptural, three-dimensional forms. There's sort of a self-portrait here, and then he's in this, in this bed, and he's being guarded and watched. He was tortured a little bit, or a lot, depending on, you know, uh, the incarceration. He's been incarcerated a few times. Um, but this depicted the incarceration and his feeling about it and the closeness and the um, claustrophobia of it. So it, it's kind of wild because he, he designed that beautiful bird, uh, bird's nest uh, stadium for the Beijing Olympics in 2008. He's a huge artist, very important guy. But the only reason they probably have not killed him or disappeared him is because of his intense fame worldwide. Um, but this it, this piece talks about his incarceration. So they the viewers can look through those windows. We're looking through that little tiny window here. And you can sort of feel like you're a prison guard. And there are different scenes. He's asleep in some, eating, being inter interrogated, and so on. So his work is not shown in China, and he's forbidden from leaving the country. So it's kind of like, we hate you, but we love you, but we hate you. We're going to torture you. So he's very famous. They're proud of him on one way, in one way, yet they can't seem to tell him what to do enough and to keep him from speaking out. So at times he is under arrest.